Hello once again, my dear future agriculturist. So, how was the review questions? Did you find it hard or did you find it easy? Okay, so much for that. Uh, let us continue our topic which is all about soil genesis, composition, and development. If we say soil genesis, it is defined as a study of the origin and the formation of the soil. So, under this, there are different topics, but first, let us discuss the concept of soil. So, with its subtopics, first, we are going to define what is soil. Second, we are going to discuss the important soil science terms. Third, the four major components of soil. Fourth, the approaches in the study of soil. And fifth, the fields of study in soil. Okay. Soil is essential for life. Did you agree? Okay, because it provides nutrients, water, and minerals to plants and trees and is a home or habitat to millions of insects, bacteria, and small animals. So without the soil, we could not able to produce any crops or other useful plants and it also supports livestock and uh, construction materials for shelter. Indeed, Soil is a life giver. There is life in the soil. Okay. Speaking of soil, how are you going to define soil? Or what is your perception about soil? Some people uh, perceive soil as dirt. And some also perceive soil as an important natural resource. Okay. If you say soil, this can be perceived in different uh individuals by different people depending on their viewpoints or experiences okay we have here a picture showing you a group of people harvesting their vegetable crops specifically kangkong pichai and uh, eggplant so who do you think they are so they are classified as horticulturists so according to the horticulturist Soil serves as a medium of plant growth as to its physical support for the anchorage of plant roots, the nutrient, and water supplier. And then we have also the engineers. So according to the engineers, soil is an unconsolidated mineral and organic material on the earth's surface down to bedrock. So engineers think of something that has been moved around by equipment and whether it is suitable for construction projects like homes, buildings, roads, and others. And another we have the Geologists, so they are the one who study the origin of the earth as to its history, nature, processes, materials, and others. So according to them, soil is the decomposed surface of rocks wherein they believe or perceive that soil comes from rock or started out from the weathering of rocks. And as for the soil scientists, they define soil as a mixture of organic and inorganic materials which is developed on the earth's surface through the weathering process of rocks and minerals and whose properties are conditioned in various degrees by the influence of climate, living organisms, relief or topography, acting on the parent material over a period of time. So, soil is influenced by this five factors of soil formation wherein it can be abbreviated or the acronym for these five factors of soil formation is CLORPT. So we will discuss this uh, later on in our review. And another, um, they define soil as a non-renewable resource. What is non-renewable resource? It is a natural resource that cannot be easily replenished or replaced by natural means. So the question is, why is it soil is considered as a non-renewable resource? Did you know? It can take up to 1,000 years to produce just 2 to 3 centimeters of soil. If humans grow that slowly, then it would take 80,000 years to grow a basketball player. So imagine that. Although often undervalued, soil is actually critical for life. Therefore, we must take good care of our soil since it is especially 
vulnerable to soil degradation and can disappear in seconds. So we have here some important terms in soil science. First, we are going to define what is soil science. It is uh, it deals with the study of soils as a natural resource on the surface of the earth, which uh, include the soil formation, classification, mapping, its physical, chemical, and biological properties, and also its relation to crop production management. And we all know that soil is the outermost uh, layer of the earth in which uh, the plants and trees grow. We use many different words about it like uh, earth, uh, ground, soil surface, dirt, and mud. So what is the difference? Let's check out these terms and uh, let's see the difference. So let's start with earth. So what is earth? If it is spelled with a capital E, then it refers to our planet. If it is spelled with a small e, then it refers to the soil. And another term, we have ground. It is the solid surface that you walk on. It is made of soil, but also rock, sand, or a man-made material. Soil surface is defined as the upper limit of soil which is the boundary between soil and either air shallow water live plants or plant materials that have not begun to decompose and we have dirt so uh, many people just like what i've said perceive soil as dirt so what is dirt it is a displaced or loose soil so it used to be a soil and it come from the soil but it has been moved from the place where it shouldn't be like the dirt in your shoes in your feet or in your clothes so just like for example here as you can see the soil has been attached onto the feet of a person then um, that soil has been displaced in its original place then it can be uh, called as dirt and another term we have mad so it is a liquid or semi-liquid mixture of soil and water. So MAD is equals to soil plus water is equals to this. So this is what it looks like, the MAD. Okay, did you know roughly soil is made up of air, 25% of its volume, water, 25%, inorganic mineral particles, 45%, and organic matter, 5%. So... As you can recall sa review questions, we have here the uh, what we call as the four components of the soil. Okay, so this is what we call as the soil composition. So soil as a three-phase system, we have the liquid phase, we have the gaseous phase, and the solid phase. So um, for the solid phase, it composed of the mineral matter with 45%, which is the largest part of the solid phase. And then the smallest part, we have organic matter with 5%. And for the liquid phase, we have the water with 25%. And for the gaseous phase, we have the air with 25%. So together, water plus air is equals to the pore spaces or pore spaces are occupied by water and air okay so as you can see solid phase with 45 percent mineral matter and organic matter with five percent is equals to 50 percent for the solid phase and another 50 percent for the pore spaces with 25 percent for water and 25 percent for the air okay we will continue the other part of this uh, topic uh, later on in our uh, discussion. Thank you.